said she is feeling amazing. So she said thanks again to everybody who's, uh, you know, helping her out in the public. Cause you know, she went through a real bad divorce. And usually, too, when you go through a divorce, honey, you lose weight. So congratulations to her, and she's looking good. And I say, all right, Mr. Tony, girl, I hope you don't get married again no time soon. No, just go ahead and take your time and keep making your movies and making your money. All right, the Kahlua today is one of my favorite Kahluas. My Kahlua today, y'all, is Toyota's. On the high end, you say Toyota's, and on the low end, you say beautiful black and brown. That's your Kahlua for the day. Brad, what you got coming up in the high spot? Oh, uh, Gary, coming up in the high spot, I got some R. Kelly news. Lord have mercy. And I'm going to tell you all about it up next. It's the Ricky Great. Smiley Morning Show. All right, John Rick's around the morning show. The same as being body by Indeed. That's right, with Indeed Instant Match. Just sponsor and post. Uh, just sponsor up post and immediately receive a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed Match your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash credit. What up, Brett? What up, Ricky? Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brett Tat Tat, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it, y'all. Uh, in a new court filing, R. Kelly has been accused of sexually abusing a teenage boy. Uh, according to Page Six, prosecutors in New York detailed a series of new accusations against him dating back 30 years, including the sexual abuse of a male minor in 2006. The court filing alleges that Kelly sexually abused the 17-year-old after meeting him at a McDonald's in Chicago, asking him what he was willing to do to succeed in the music business. The teen allegedly introduced R. Kelly to a second teenage boy who was then 16 or 17 years old. Several years later, uh, Kelly allegedly started sexual relations with the second John Doe and forced several of his girlfriends, including a minor girl, to have sex with the young man while he filmed. Prosecutors also said that the woman alleged that Kelly directed her to search the internet for child pornography involving boys for him. The woman, is, it, the woman is expected to testify. The search authorized on Kelly's computer corroborated the claim, according to the court doc. Oh, Lord, does this get any worse? Oh. You yeah, need to just plead guilty and uh, get a, yeah, so they stop the looking at stuff. Just do sort. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, because it's too much. It is. It's. It's. Oh man, it's just not looking good at all. It already. And then wasn't they also need good. to find out who molested and did some of the stuff to him. You know. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? It goes so far back. It do. It, yeah, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. It don't. It don't matter. But it needs to be talked right. about or whatever. Because I believe uh, it was talked about, Rick. I saw something. Uh, it was. Wasn't it his sister or something or his cousin? It was a cousin or something. It, so, something did happen to him. Like yeah, they, 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 I'm not. I'm not justifying anything that we or excusing anything. But yeah. I mean, you know, people like yeah, I mean, they need to go all the hurt way people, back hurt and people. hold yeah. all these people accountable. That's right. Yeah. But you know, they're not gonna do that. I mean, they keep going back to get all these people's tweets and trying to make everybody look bad, like what they yeah, did to Kevin Hart. Yeah, but the people who, who did something to him, you know, in his family, the 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 just the law ain't gonna have no interest in that. They they just want to punish him. That's why I say he need to just accept whatever is coming and and get this get it over with because it's just dragging out. Yeah, man, and his, it seems like his people are the ones that keep wanting to push it back. So <clears throat> I don't know, Lord. Um, mm. We're going to move on, y'all. Whitney Houston's yep. estate has announced an upcoming Los Angeles residency, y'all, called An Evening with Whitney, the Whitney Houston Hologram Concert. Now, it will begin in October, October 26th to be exact, and it'll take place at Harris Las Vegas Hotel and Casino. Now, Pat Houston, the executor of Whitney's estate, said in a statement, in 2011, Whitney and and I discussed her idea of an intimate unplugged concert tour. It was the project we call Whitney Unplugged or An Evening with Whitney. While Whitney's no longer with us, her voice and legacy will live on with us forever. An Evening with Whitney is another chance for us to re relive and celebrate the talent that we were so lucky to receive for more than three decades. The residency will kick off in October, October 26. What y'all think about that? Uh, did, did somebody send those holograms? Uh, is, is, uh, are creepy? Yeah, I was just gonna say it's creepy. It's creepy. Yeah. It's creepy. I, and don't whole, I wouldn't want to see that. A whole. I mean, I think I would want to see it just to see what it looks like. I mean, yeah. I, I've seen it on TV, but to be sitting there and I, I, oof, I don't know. I, I'm I'm interested to in see what it looked like, but it does look kind of creepy. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, y'all, Tiffany Haddish is ready to transform into the fastest woman in the world. Land, she landed the role of the late iconic Flo Jo 
Griffin, okay, uh, for the forthcoming biopic. She told people, this is going to be huge. My legs are going to be amazing. She said Florence Griffith Joyner was an amazing human being, and I'm learning more about her. And I'm like, wow. She also spoke on her 50 cent, uh, 50 cent, her 50 pound weight loss and said, first of all, it feels good to be able to wear a two piece and not feel like, oh, I got to put on a whole sarong and a very large cover up, coverall situation. It feels good to be able to be free. And the main thing about the whole transformation is my knees feel like they're happy. <laughs> when my legs are happy, Tiffany's happy. <laughs> all right, Tiffany, congratulations on your role. I can't wait because I feel like she's going to kill this. All right, y'all, come. that's going to wrap up the hot spot right there. Coming up next, we got Rock T's joke of the day. And why don't y'all hit us up for them wake-up calls at 866-9-RICKY. That's 866-9-R-I-C-K-E-Y. Time now is 25 minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. It is about that time for Rock T's joke of the day. <laughs> joke of the day. It ain't even on beat. I know. It's all right. <laughs> it don't matter because the joke going to make up for it. Oh, Lord. That's all right. is in your hand. Mm -hmm. A man walks into an empty bar. It's just him and the bartender. He sits down and orders a drink, and then he hears something whisper. Psst, I like your tie. The man looks around but doesn't see anybody. He hears it again. Psst, the color looks nice on you. Mm -hmm. He's Turns around to the bartender and says, excuse me, sir, but are you speaking to me? The bartender rolls his eyes and says, nah, I'm sorry, bud. It's the peanuts. They're complimentary. <laughs> I like that. You know what? Okay. I like that. Come on, okay. Bro. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're getting, you getting better. Yeah. Complimentary. <laughs> That's some peanuts in that compliment inside. <laughs> Okay. That's a good start, Rock. Oh, we appreciate that. Thumbs up, Rock. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you get that. You stupid. I thought you, I thought you were going to say a horse walks into a bar and said, and the bartender said, hey, why the long face? Yeah. <laughs> I know what I thought you were going to say, but, but I like the one with the peanut. Oh, man. That's good, Rock. That's funny. Appreciate that, dog. That's good. Woo-wee. Happy That's here good. all week. Thank you. Yeah. All right, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> More Rick's Mind the Morning Show coming up. I see this lady broke down on the side of the expressway, and y'all know me. You know how I am. I pull over immediately to check on her, make sure she was good. And when she stood up, you know, she was a little taller than I expected. And it made me realize she was a translator. Not not translator. What's the word on it? She was a, a transgender. Uh. And you know what I'm saying? So she started walking towards me. And I was like, all right, be careful, have a nice day. And he was like, you not going to help me? I was like, no, ma'am. And she was like, uh, how come? I was like, ma'am, you got it, sir. And she was like, what you mean I got it? I was like, if you can change your sex, sir, you can change that guy's <laughs> time. Coming up next. Coming up next, y'all. Candy Burris, where is she and what is she doing? We're going to talk about it next week. It's about the morning show. All right, Rick, about the morning show. Six minutes after the hour, y'all. The state was being bought by Ford. That's right. The 2021 Ford Bronco Sport was created to go wherever and how you choose. Go beyond and into the outdoors. Release your inner adventurer. Built wild. Built Ford proud. All right, Gary, what up? Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Monday, a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. The prayer warriors, honey, are being solicited, y'all, for the cast and crew and production team, y'all, from Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, I don't know if y'all heard the story, but it's being reported, y'all, that... The major star, the main star of the show, Candy Burris, y'all, may be quitting the show unless, y'all, they're saying unless her salary is double. Now, they're saying that the Real Housewives of Atlanta will be without one of its most popular members, y'all. Now, they're saying Candy Burris is expected to leave the show um, maybe sometime this season. Now, they're saying that the new season of the Real Housewives of Atlanta is in utter shambles as it stands. They're saying as the ratings for the show, y'all, have fallen to its lowest 
ever. And it said, y'all, that Candy is preparing to leave the show unless, y'all, they double her salary. And all she's asking for, allegedly, is $4 million, y'all, <laughs> yeah. immediately $4 million. Yeah. Now, they're saying, honey, now they say Candy, who acts on, on the series, The Shy, and also narrating Keeping Up with the Joneses, is moving to New York, where she is part of the production, producing team, y'all, of the upcoming um, play, Thoughts of a Colored Man, which is set to star, y'all, Broadway's first all black male cash out and according to my sources y'all they're saying not a single person on the show have signed a contract or was offered a contract as of yet mm. so some people are saying y'all that they're looking um, for they're doing more recruiting in Bankhead Georgia they said they're trying to find I guess to get the housewives of Bankhead I don't know in Bankhead but they, yes that's what I was told <laughs> so they're saying honey that this is where they're, they're trying to find women there and they're saying honey also Candy y'all who told um, the rest she said that she's not willing y'all to fly back and forth from New York to Atlanta y'all for her um, filming unless her salary is doubled y'all so let's keep Candy lift up in prayer y'all I mean it's amazing you know this is a great show but I didn't know the, the ratings had gone down I thought they were still doing good since it was still on but evidently according to the report y'all they're saying that well, the candidate, they're going to have to get Beyonce at that point. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so it's just something. I ain't mad at her salary ask, though, honey. Yeah, yeah. she just wanted to double. I mean, four million dollars. I mean, what's a, a, a what's an episode, uh, I mean, a season, um, even that, a, what's, what's a season consist of? A year? As far I mean, as, uh, filming? Yeah. They usually film from Memorial Day all the way up until Halloween. So it's usually the end of May all the way through mm. October, and then the show comes out in November. So with them not having a cast and not having it set and them not being in production right now, I don't know what's going to happen with the show. Mm. Mm. Well, we're going to keep them lifted up in prayer, honey. Hopefully they pay care of money so she don't have to do all that back and forth flying and whatever. And, you know, you're holding up people. Yeah, they holding up Did you see scared. Potomac last night, Gary? Girl, yes. <laughs> I love Potomac. <laughs> oh, I love it. Potomac is good, honey. But that helped me or something else, honey. Ooh, she a mess, That child. new girl, yes. yes she a All right, moving on. We'll chat later. <laughs> um, moving on to the celebrity news job. Baby Gabrielle Union, they're saying, baby, this girl cut her hair off. A lot of people say because there may be marital issues, honey. Now they're saying Gabrielle got her a new haircut, a new uh. couple chop. And they're saying, honey, baby, a lot of people say she probably could have had because Dwayne Wade is sick of it, and there may be um, problems in the house, so they say the marriage was in trouble. Now, um, one report claimed that Dwayne was tired of his much older wife and has been secretly planning to divorce her and what have you. So, no. But, well, you just never know. But I want to know, she cut all her hair, but why she didn't have Zaya with her? She had, was exposing her for everything else, exposing this new haircut. And let's see if Zaya see you get your haircut, so as she gets older, she'll know how to cut her hair and all this other doggone stuff. But anyway. Gary, what? What does Zaya have to do with this lady's haircut? Well, I just felt like saying that. Because anyway. Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> but we going to put Zaya and everything else and expose them. Let's expose her to this haircut, honey, and see what's really going on with Zaya's sure. daddy and you. But anyway, she looks amazing. Congratulations to um, Gabrielle Union. Honey. She looks good with her new haircut. All right, my final story, y'all. Kanye West recently did that listening party um, at the um, America, I mean at the um, Mercedes Benz Stadium in Dow I mean in Atlanta, Georgia, and people are still talking about it. First of all, they're saying that the music was, you know, kind of iffy, but the main thing people are talking about, they're saying the prices he was charging for the food. He they alleged they were saying they charged fifty dollars for three chicken fingers. They said he was charging thirty five dollars for popcorn and sixty five dollars for a doggone um, snack basket. That's just ridiculous. And well, who was dumb enough to pay that? Thank you. People were about it, but they but Kim Kardashian was there. Yeah, they, but God doggone, Brad, three chicken fingers for fifty dollars. <laughs> That's that's the, Merce the, Mercedes, the Mercedes Stadium uh, uh, make that money, don't they? No, that's his money. They say he um, he he set those rates and stuff for that price. I'm sure they probably get something off of it, though, Ricky. But honey, that's right. ridiculous. Well, but if Kim you're dumb enough to swipe your card for that, then you deserve it. Well, yeah, but Kim Kardashian. Good as hell. I can't wait, wait till I leave to eat. <laughs> I know, hell, I eat before you go there. But um, his his wife was there, well, his ex wife to be Kim Kardashian was there. A lot of people say, honey, she was at the cash register, honey, making sure that that money comes because, you know, she's going to need her oh, child support. Yeah. And Kanye got to make the money some kind of way and what have you. So there you have it. But I, I, I just, I, when I saw that, and it was all out in the news mm -hmm. and stuff, I'm like, who pays that? But well, I would have went and got me a bag full of crystals and some of them fries and a slush <laughs> and stuffed it in a coat. I'd have been the only one in there with a coat on. <laughs>
Be like Tiffany <laughs> Edge was with her chicken in that Ziploc bag, baby. Uh, <laughs> baby. Out them, little, them little square crystals one by one, slowly. <laughs> a chili and puff. I said, sir, where did you get that from? It's on the menu. You just didn't see it. Okay. Uh, but they paid. And so, guess congratulations to Kanye and also, And they say they're on the same clothes for three days straight. So, I don't know if that was for good luck or not. The color today, honey, is one of my favorite color. My color today, y'all, is toilets. On the high end, you say toilets. And on the low end, you say beautiful black and brown. That's your color for today. All right, y'all, give it up for Gary with the D. All right, y'all, get at me. I got your welcome call. Call me up right now, 8669-RICKY, 8669-R-I-C-K-E-Y. Hit me up. Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Time for the welcome call. Get at your boy, 8669-RICKY, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Wake up. Good morning from Minnesota. This is Carla to all of the incoming first year grad students at UAB in the public health department. Wake up, wake up, wake up. I'm going to wake up Louisville, Kentucky, the Derby City, and also tell Ricky Smiley, thank you. I went and got my shot on Friday. This is Constance from Birmingham. Shout out to my sons, Donald and Cameron, going off to college. Uh, Donald to Miles, Cameron to Jacksonville State. Mommy and Daddy are so proud of you. Love you. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Yeah, Rick, you got the colonel here from Duval County. Wake your ass up. Come on. Wake up. Toyota, that's right, when you get behind the wheel of a handsomely rugged Toyota truck, mighty moments full of head-turning, half-ton swagger are always right around the corner. Toyota, let's go places. All right, 26. 26 oh. minutes after now, y'all Bernie Jenkins got the church announcements. Coming up, it's my morning show. Ricky Smiley Morning Show, 29 minutes after the top of the hour. Ladies and gentlemen, our favorite grandmama is back in the studio, Miss Bernie Jenkins. There are some things I would not know. Uh -oh. There are some places I wouldn't go. <laughs> but Jesus is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Uh oh, oh, oh. Yes, God is real. <laughs> He's real in my soul. Yeah. Come on, now. My God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. Well, all right. Oh, now. my God is real. real. Uh-oh. He's just like pure gold. Uh -oh. My God is real. Oh, I can feel yes. him in my soul. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love, thank you for that backup, man. They don't know that song, Brad. You grew yes. up, you know the Lord. Amen. <laughs> is, our, <laughs> is our church announcement this man and govern yourself? According to oh, oh, The third annual Children with Grown Faces contest is next Sunday. Ah. Oh, so, Lord. Parents, if you have a little boy... The age of seven under that, uh, uh, if you if you age seven and under that looks like Eddie Levert <laughs> or Peebo Bryson or Reverend Jesse Jackson in the face, <laughs> please submit pictures by this coming Friday. Oh Lord! <laughs> Whoever been putting scratch off lottery tickets in the tithing envelopes? The past 12 Sundays, please stop. <laughs> Ain't none of them won not a dollar. <laughs> oh, Lord. And Mother Daniels, arthritis get flared up from doing all of that scratching. So somebody <laughs> trying to go to hell up in here. <laughs> 
They needed right. to stop immediately. <laughs> <laughs> for the 38th week in a row, we have a funeral scheduled for this weekend. Uh, Brother Winston Flippins. You know him, Janie? Yeah. He will be funeralized on Saturday. He was only 36. Oh. Man. <laughs> and he was battling chronic obesity. <laughs> at five feet tall and 340 pounds. Wow. <laughs> well, we have got two knee replacements, uh, 1,200 cholesterol, <laughs> sinus infections, a weak bladder, <laughs> constant poots, <laughs> chronic diarrhea, but that ain't what killed him. He was drinking a frozen slushy while driving and caught a brain freeze at an intersection in Black Mount and got T-boned by a speeding city bus. So we'll be buried in a piano case. We uh, have a regular had to buy my folk plots at the cemetery farm. They didn't use a hearse. They used. A Amazon van instead of a hearse. So they did. <laughs> Jane, I'll call you and give you the rest of the detail. It's too bad. It's bad. That can do it. I'll check the numbers. All right. Y'all have a good day. Oh, man. Rick's Modern Morning Show. John Lyon on the ones and twos. Chicken and waffle meat's going down, man. I hope everybody having a safe drive to work this morning. What up, John? I'm good, man. You know, you know, just kicking off the week with straight energy inside the mix, man. Of course, you make sure you link me on the Instagram at J-A-A Lion Zone. Hey, John, did you DJ for uh, for, for, uh, for Yeezy? <laughs> <laughs> no, man, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John Lion on the one and two, y'all. Chicken and Waffle Mix, man. Hey, appreciate you, John. <laughs> yeah, man. My pleasure, my Ricky. All right, uh, uh, Black Tony, this is how you going to start the week off? Bro, yeah, you promised us uh, Friday you was coming to work. Oh, I was, I was coming to work, but then uh, I got an email yesterday, so, or the, uh, I got an email yesterday from uh, the research room, the uh, research. The reception. No, nah, the research. Uh, Human resources. Yeah, I got an email from them. I got it right here. I got it right here. And it said that on... Um, I don't, I'm off the whole week. So I'm off the whole week because um, no. I, I got co uh, post 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 ceramic squares uh, squares uh, disorder. What do you say, Ron? I don't know something about post 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 traumatic stress disorder. So I, oh, post traumatic stress disorder from what? Yo, they said because uh, cause they said that my supervisor has uh, harassing because constantly harassing me. About coming right. to work and not showing up, and that the stress from me having to call every day and tell you why I ain't coming to work got me stressed out. And they sent me to a counselor therapy, and they put me on medication, and they said I'm gonna be out the whole week, <laughs> and you gonna have, and they're gonna they're gonna be up for a lawsuit if if you keep stressing me. And um, they said I ain't gotta come to work. So I could I could focus on my hustle. How many years have been to work, work bro? I feel, bro. Man, it's been almost four years. But Black Tone, let me ask you a question, bro. What's what? the purpose of wanting a job and not wanting to come to work? Here we go, shout it. You scratch. I'm triggered. I'm feeling triggered again, shout it. You scratching me right now. That's what I'm talking about. That's what he folks talking about. That's why your ass can have a lawsuit over a glad life skin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John Rick's Mind the Morning Show. Gary has the tea and the color of the day being brought to you by Capital One. All right, uh, that's how I find it and say, go ahead, Gary, what up? Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Monday, a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. A lot of people, y'all, are dragging little Jay-Z through the ringers, honey, for the gift that he gave to one of his friends for um, that he's been known for more than two decades. Now, it's been reported that Jay-Z gifted y'all Memphis Bleak, y'all, a $200,000 
Diamond Rockefeller chain. And a lot of people are saying, honey, that was tacky and cheap. Now they're saying Jay-Z decided to give the um, gift in honor of his reasonable um, doubt 25th anniversary. And, you know, people say, well, God, he could have gave me something bigger than this. $30,000 not much here. Cardi B pays that for a purse. And he giving um, this guy a diamond oh, necklace. God. So, he didn't have to give him nothing, Gary. Well, well, we know that, Brad, but I'm looking at the necklace, though. So, the I'm necklace. sure he's grateful. I'm sure he's grateful for what he got from Jay-Z. Well, I don't, I don't think know. he's complaining. I don't think he's complaining. Well, I don't know if he's not complaining or not, Brad, but people are talking about because they said those diamonds were not that big. They were like more like diamond chips instead of a nice weight diamond, mm -hmm. and he only paid two hundred thousand dollars for it. But so. Gary, when you're making something that has like the label name or spelling something, you can't put big big stones in it. Then you won't be able to read what it says. Mm. <laughs> well, then you need to tell the people that because people are very angry, and Jay Z is a billionaire, and <laughs> I'm angry. Okay. you know, yes. You know that I mean it's not a good look. I mean, would y'all accept a two hundred thousand um, dollar? Yes, absolutely. You don't even have to finish. Yes, a two hundred dollar one. Yeah, sure it's the thought that count, Gary. Yeah, I know it's the thought that count, but the people are angry. He's been knowing this guy for over two decades. That means that's, that's okay. over twenty years. He's been years. helping him along the way. Remember, he was locked up. Jay Z was trying to get him out. I think yeah. it has something to do with him getting out. So some some things that are more are, are not are like priceless, Gary. You know, some things yeah. you can't put a price tag on. It's well, the thought. Well, I feel bad for him because he was Don't. showing the necklace and people saying, well, you could have kept there. Oh, let's congratulations <laughs> to Memphis, honey, and his um, new diamond pendant, honey, that Jay-Z gave him for a measly $200,000. All right. Oh. Moving on. In other celebrity news, y'all, Lil Nas, baby, they said the parents are angry because what's going on <laughs> with Lil Nas and, and the children. Now, I know, Spencer, you saw this video. Now, they're saying, y'all, that Lil Nas is doing, he's showing this video, y'all, with men are twerking in jail naked. And they're saying, y'all, that this is ridiculous and people are outraged with this is honey. They say no one's funny has, about it. What? <laughs> He it seemed like after he kissed that dude on stage at the awards show, they said, man, how much gear can he get? And he said, hold my beer while I drop this video. Because <laughs> <laughs> he did something, they said, honey, he has a huge children father, and they said that his record label has cultivated. <laughs> Sum it up right there. <laughs> you yeah. know what, Mr. Gay? <laughs> it don't get no gayer than what you did. It's so funny to me, though, because he just don't care. and it, He it, don't. People... And people get so triggered by it, and they just don't understand. Like, this has nothing to do with your life. Let that man just do what he do, man. Stop. Just, yeah. he's going to be him. <laughs> yeah, well, honey, we just got to keep going. I find it funny. I don't know. Lift it in prayer, honey, though. But I mean, <laughs> maybe my beer. <laughs> <laughs> Until I do this, honey. Rick, but did this... you see the video? No, bro. Oh, yeah. oh my God. After the BET award, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, you know. yeah, he's the master. Because troll, the man. thing he's about it is, it's, it's like we don't we don't care that you gay, man. Give us the music. We I came I came for the music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. all that's part of promo. And the people that don't pay attention to the music, they know what he got going on in this world because we all talking about it. Right. Yeah. Yep. And we are, honey. So it's a great video, I guess. But a lot of people <laughs> ain't because they blocking out everything. So I'm like, I don't know why are you don't know, you ain't blocking out everything. So, but child, it's out there. And they're saying the parents are. Angry. I didn't know they still had kids left. I didn't know there was still kids around. But nevertheless, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't never see them anywhere anymore. Just that's because you, 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 Gary. What are you it's talking about, you? Gary? What are you yeah, talking about? You insane? Like, you don't, mean, you don't, you don't go kids. out, Gary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know the Water Boys, but I mean, but they're Not kids. The, but I guess, but uh, they just, they're Gary, there's kids different. everywhere. What are you talking oh. about? I didn't know. I thought everybody came out grown. But anyway, child, moving on. In my final story, I see badass. He said he needs people to help him with his deer problems. He got some deer problems at his house, and he want people to help him out with the deer problems. He said, you know, I always need something right. He said, I got deer problems. I need a deer hitter. He said, honey, he said, I need somebody to come who know how to shoot deer because I got a real deer problem. I need a deer hitter. I need somebody who knows what they are doing. And he went on and on, and they drug him, too. They said, how dare you get on social media talking about you need a deer here and want people to kill deer and stuff and honey that's the, uh, uh, animal. He just he stay getting drunk. <laughs> Who is this guy? Boosty badass. Yeah, deer, deer, Boosty. now deer meat is, is is really good, but you can only shoot them during deer season. But they do have that's repellent awesome. at Home Depot. You got all kind of deer repellent. You can go out there, sprinkle in your yard or whatever, and it it repels deers and raccoons. So you can so. eat a deer that's just rocking around the yard? Yeah, if it's that's deer what, season, you can shoot it. Really? It's, some, it's different states, got different laws, but whatever. But, uh, yeah, man, they, they, they be everywhere. 
Well, they that sausage is good, Rick. Right? Yeah, I never had the sausage, but I can't uh, eat it. It tastes, me neither. It tastes funny to me. I can't do it. Somebody you have to get you have to get Uncle Jesse to cook. I got an uncle uh, that just turned eighty nine yesterday. My uncle Jesse Reed, I swear he can uh, make he make the best deer ever. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, all right then. Well, there you go. So yeah, let's pray for Boosie that they stop dragging him in his deer. I mean, he must live in a nice neighborhood because I know in nice neighborhoods they have deers, right? Because you have to yeah. build a yeah. nice house or something. Yeah. Well, deer they be in the hood too. Oh, really? that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I ain't never yeah, seen sure. the deer in the hood. Me neither, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn apartment complexes in Center Point, boy, they be shooting and <laughs> deers be out there running, they be running. <laughs> <laughs> I seen two deers with, with <laughs> in Center Point, I seen two deers with bunnets on. <laughs> 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 Don't go to Center Point. You see everything. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> see damn, see damn yes, raccoons in a Dodge Charger. Oh, 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 Do not move to Center Point. <laughs> All right, baby, for the Diaz and Barnes. The color today is Titus. I'm high, you say Titus. Yeah, yeah, you know. Titus say black and brown. <laughs> 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 oh, <geez. laughs> oh, I'm crying. Can you read this damn commercial? Oh, you better read that girl. Huh? You said what, girl? You better read that girl, honey. That's our coins. <laughs> Start reading. <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. This is being bought you by Capital One. That's right. Capital One has no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts. That's banking remained. That's right. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. Capital One. In a member FDIC. All right, y'all. Coming up next, we got more Rick's Mountain Morning Show coming up. All right, Rick's Mountain Morning Show, 24 minutes after the hour, y'all. The same is being brought to you by... Macy's. Tune in each week to the Undressing Room Podcast, presented by Macy's, with hosts me, Eva Marcel, L'Oreal, and Dominique the Diva. We are three powerhouse women who are not afraid to speak our mind. Available wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, y'all, uh, we got the one and only Dr. MJ Collier on with us. It did not have to be this way, but the United States is going in the wrong direction again when it comes to this COVID-19 pandemic. And we got the one and only Dr. MJ Collier is here with the latest. And uh, he's going uh take your questions so you can get at us right now, 866-9-RICKY. Dr. Collier, good morning. Good morning, Ricky Smiley, and happy Monday to you, Brad, Eva. Special K and Cool Rock T and Good Morning Gary with the T here with your coronavirus COVID-19 update. Let me tell you, Ricky, let's go over what we know right now. One, vaccinated people are nearly guaranteed not to be hospitalized or killed by COVID. Two, children under 12 who remain ineligible for the vaccine, serious forms of COVID are extremely rare. So children face bigger risks from just riding in the car, uh, you know, every day, all day. And three, the Delta variant doesn't seem to appear to change either of those facts if you are vaccinated. Millions of unvaccinated American adults are vulnerable to hospitalizations of death, so that's what we know. So our COVID fighting strategy has not changed despite this second wave of the pandemic. We need vaccines in arms. We need everybody to go out and get their vaccines, uh, the two-dose corona, I mean the two-dose Pfizer or Moderna, the one-dose Johnson & Johnson. All of them will give you protection from the coronavirus and the various variants that are out there so we need strategies that work one once we get full FDA approval, that's thought that's going to really make a major difference in the way some people are approaching this. Uh, the FDA has already endorsed it. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, going through the politics of getting it signed off on. So I'm not sure how, how big an impact it's actually going to make. So we need to get some pro-vaccination messages from Republican politicians because they are having a significant impact on people's behavior. And then uh, professional athletes and celebrities who get the vaccine, they need to let everybody know they're getting it, why they got it, and endorse getting the vaccine. And hopefully that would change the behavior amongst those that are unvaccinated. All right, John, let's go to the calls. John, with Dr. Collier, good morning. Why is there so much misinformation about these vaccines and these shots? Because, look, there's folks that's taking these vaccine shots, and there's folks that's catching this virus. Why is these shots not working? 
Okay, the shots actually are working. Let's be clear. That, a definitive statement. The shots are working. They are preventing disease, and you're getting into the disease state. If you do happen to get you in that 5% of people that do get coronavirus, uh, you're going to have a mild case. It's not going to result in hospitalization or death. So that's the best outcome you could anticipate from any type of vaccination program. So the vaccines are working, and just misinformation is out there. Dr. Carter, one day you got to jump on and tell us the science part of what's uh uh i'll make a video about uh you know how the vaccine is working in detail uh, uh keeping people from being uh, hospitalized uh that, that would be a great video and get into the science part of it so people that, that i think that'll help people get a, uh, okay we'll better. make it and we'll post it absolutely are right, you on with dr collier good morning Dr. Collier, my brother had the Moderna shot back in March, and now he didn't take the um, second shot. So now he's taking about he's thinking about taking that shot. Is it okay if he go ahead and take that second shot now, or is it too late? No, no, not never too late. There are so many people that have taken the first shot and have, for whatever reason, not taken the second shot yet. Uh, but whenever you take the second shot, it's going to boost your immunity. There's no protocol for going back and taking two shots again. So if you've had the first shot, the taking the second shot now will just boost his immunity and give him, and he'll be fully vaccinated. Remember, your full vaccination status requires you to be two weeks past the second dose. And so that's what we want everybody to be, having gotten two shots of the two-shot regimens. All right, you're on with Dr. Collier. Good morning. I have a 12-year-old right now that I'm trying to convince to get the vaccination, and he's very scared. I want to know how is it that I can convince my 12-year-old son that it's for his safety that we get this vaccination. A 12-year-old, Ricky, <laughs> and they're having this debate. Okay, uh... I think that, that uh, again, just explaining to them that it's, it's no different from any other vaccinations if they've gotten the flu vaccines. The 12-year-old is still getting the routine regular vaccinations, which includes things like tetanus shots, uh, diphtheria, et cetera. So, um, you know, ha endorsing that and letting them know, one, there's a lot of misinformation about that. Let them know that it's safe, that it's now uh, okay for 12-year-olds and older to get the vaccine, and they should not have any problems with it. But the protection that they will get will allow them to go to school, interact with their peers, and do all of the things they want to do once they start having mandates and telling you you can't go to the movie theater you can't go to schools uh you can't go to you know restaurants etc then people are going to be clamoring for shots so right now it's easy to get it he needs to get it before he goes back to school all right you're on with dr mj collier good morning well good morning dr collier my question is i suffered from covid last year i was actually my twin brother and i both had covid unfortunately he passed away last year i plan on taking the vaccine tomorrow at the walk-in program i have problems difficulties Sometimes breathing, it's not anxiety or it's not um, hyperventilating. I don't know what the problem is, and my doctors don't either. Is the vaccine safe for me to take as me being still having issues from the COVID from last year? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, you are a person that most needs to get the vaccine, and I'm glad you're doing that. But what I do recommend, and Dr. Kyle, you're saying this, before you go get the vaccine, take an anti-inflammatory such as Motrin, Advil, or Aleve to decrease the inflammatory process that will include inflammation in your lungs, and a non-sedating antihistamine such as Claritin, uh, Allegra, Zyrtec, or Zizol. All of those will minimize your system. You start taking those today and continue to take them for the next two days or for a total of three days of therapy. And then that should minimize your symptoms. And also take your um, omega fish oil every day because that's an anti-inflammatory vitamin. Am I right, Dr. Carter? Absolutely. Omega-3 fish oil and the vitamin D at 5,000 international units per day. All of those will boost your immune system regardless of whether it's coronavirus or not. Disclaimer. Okay, these are the opinions of Dr. F.J. Collier, not those of Mr. Ricky Smiley, the Ricky Smiley Morning Show cast or production crew. Listen to on the radio across the country and on the Internet around the world. Reach me on all social media at Ask A.S.K. Dr. M.J. and go to my website, lipodrops.com, and learn how to boost your immune system. There it is, y'all. More Ricky Smiley Morning Show coming up. All right, Ricky Smiley Morning Show, 12 before the top of the hour. Eva, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Eva's Corner, where we talk about everything womanhood, motherhood, and the juiciness in between. And today, ladies, I want to talk to you, but fellas, you might want to listen up. So I want to know how the ladies these days, with the pandemic going on, are maintaining their sexy. 
As a mom of three, a wife, a working woman, sexy is not always on my list of priorities. But the truth is, it is very necessary to maintain a very healthy mental as well as keeping the spark in a relationship. So I'm often asked the question, what do you do to maintain your sexy? And the truth is, I don't really have all the answers. So I want to talk to you guys today to get some of the secrets from you to find out what we can incorporate in our day-to-day -day life to help us maintain our sexy. Now, what I talk about maintaining your sexy, I'm not talking about normal grooming and maintenance like hair or nails. Not that. That's for you. I'm talking about going beyond that. So ladies, after a certain age, having children, um, you know, certain things need to be maintenance. So I want to start with Kegels and Yoni beads. Now, we brought them up before. I've heard Brad talk about them before. But Yoni <laughs> beads are something that came out a few years ago and really took the industry by storm. And what it does is it causes you to exercise your muscles on your love below and keep everything nice and tight. There's also something you can do called a V-Steam. <laughs> And a V steam allows you to keep everything below. Keep walls strong. Nice. Sorry. Hey, talk about it, Brad. I'm telling you, that's important. You gotta keep them walls strong. It's just like any other muscle in your body. Go ahead, Eve. I'm sorry. No, I love it. I love it because people need to understand what it does. And I have a lot of women that say, Oh, I'm fine or I smell good. It's not about that. It's about the fact that we are our hormonal people. And beings, as women, every month our stuff shifts and moves around. And so it's nice to concentrate cleanliness down below. So Amen. an easy way to do it is your bee steam. A monthly detox can also be of assistance to kind of yes. help you keep everything on track. And these are just a couple of things that I've come up with. But I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear what you do to maintain your sexy on a regular. So go ahead and give us a call. 866-9-RICKY. That's 866-9-R-I-C-K. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's Brad. Now, what exactly Brad? Where did that come from? I guess. Uh, <laughs> I mean, whatever you use, get something to squish around up in there so you you wash it out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You, you can't just you can't just not get in there. You have to, so aggressive, wasn't even yeah. though the V steam is amazing, everybody can't do that. So you just need to, you know, that bag your grandma had hanging on the shower. Yeah, that big, <laughs> that pink, big orange pink square. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the long white hose. Big mama kept big mama kept them cookies clean. That is not a hot water bottle. And then you just playing with it, and making it rain in the bathtub. You know, for the detergent, putting it all in your mouth and there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Whitney, we have calls. <laughs> All right, let's go to the let's go to the phones. Good morning. Okay, my name is Kristen. I'm calling from Atlanta. And my husband and I, we role play. Like, I dress up. I have all kind of sexy outfits and wigs and blonde wigs and all kind of lingerie. And I just become a different woman for him so he doesn't have to go, you know, nowhere else. My name is Adrian. I'm calling from, I'm in Houston, Texas. I'm 51, about to be 52. So in the morning, I get up, I get to the gym. I do 45 minutes of cardio. And then I do about a 30-minute weight set. And then when I get home in the evening, I go to the track. And I do about eight laps. But in between those laps, I stop and do uh, 50 um, squats in between each lap and so hey that's what I do definitely meditate and pass me pass me the bottle honey give me a good shot of Hennessy and a good roll up and see my yes. kids with their daddy <laughs> That hit the part right there. Um, no, that's right. A little bit of liquid courage will definitely make you feel sexy. So for all you women out there that needed a little pointers on helping you maintain your sexy in the midst of the world's climate right now, take it from our listeners. Work out, switch it up, keep it clean down there, keep it tight, and uh, yeah, you yeah, will stay sexy. The girl I used to talk to, she, uh -oh. I used to pick her up on the corner and give her $40, and she get in the car, and then I, you know, and, and that's, that's how we role play. Or whatever. So, huh? it, it, <laughs> now she would be on the corner. I would drive up and give her forty dollars. Yeah. She would get in the car and we would That's go home. Roll. Yes, sir. Yeah, but we broke up because she kept doing it without me and then she charging more money. <laughs> right, y'all. Four minutes after the hour. It's the Rick's Bottom Morning Show. Not easy. Ninety-three point one. Not y'all. Rock radio. Yes, sir. Boy, let me tell you something, man. Only one of the damn Doobie Brothers was black, boy. I swear, man, Michael McDonald has so much soul. Take me back, somebody. Come on, man. Michael McDonald, we all know him from I keep forgetting nothing yes. anymore. But he started with the Doobie Brothers, man. Yes, sir. Yes, he did.
Man, yeah, he came like to he Jazz in the garden. Cotton, but it sounds good. Yeah, he came. He came to Jazz in the garden two years ago, man. It was just absolutely great. I couldn't even believe believe I was standing there on the side of the stage, you know, watching him perform, man. But these a lot of people just didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Did you get to they, meet him? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. Wow. I couldn't. I couldn't freaking believe it. I could not believe it, man. Uh, to have him singing jazz in the garden, he had uh, about. Let me see. I had it had to be about thirty, forty thousand people out there that year rocking in the middle of the day, and uh, it was it was just great, man. Bring back so many childhood memories, and they played this on uh, uh, black radio stations all across the country, and you had no idea, no idea. So it's Blue Eyes Soul Week, man, and that was uh, the Doobie Brothers. What a fool believes right here. Rick and Smile, the morning show. All right, man. Glad y'all enjoyed that, man. Uh, I cannot wait until tomorrow. It's going to be slamming all week. So this month, our money expert, Janine Thorne, has been giving us ways to cut back on expenses and save some money. So if you have a, um, a finance-related question for Janine, you can call us up right now, 866-9-RICKY, 866-9-R-I-C-K-E-Y. Uh, call us up right now. Janine, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ricky. Good morning, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Hey, hey, hey. What, what up, Janai? Hey. Look, and we're so happy to have you this morning. You know, a couple of weeks ago, you gave us some good tips for looking at ways that we can cut back on monthly expenses. So now let's talk about how we can save some more dollars. Yeah, we are certainly talking about saving some more dollars today, Ricky. We can cover everything from how to save money on our utilities, groceries, home repairs, and even car repairs. But let's start with utilities, because a lot of us just kind of accept what we're paying. And we're like, you know what, it just kind of is what it is. But for those of us who are homeowners and those of you who have your own businesses, a lot of us don't realize you can actually call your utility company and ask them to come out and conduct a home energy audit for you. A lot of times it's even free. So this way they can identify other ways to reduce your energy costs and also see where you're losing money. So please call your utility company and take advantage of that. And when you're talking to them, um, another thing that a lot of us don't realize, that they can offer cheaper rates at certain times of the day. You may want to know what that is. So when you're doing your, your bigger things like doing your laundry, running your dishwasher, it can be cheaper to do that at certain times of the day. But you can find out what those peak rate times are from your utility company simply by just a phone call. Nice. Oh, wow. So, Janai, we are trying to figure out how to save money on all fronts. And on average, Americans are spending about $1,200 a year on prescriptions. So, how can we save money on our necessary prescriptions? You know, this is a really a big area for us, Eva. We spend so much money. A lot of us don't realize Costco actually is one of the lowest cost providers for prescription drugs. And you can even get your prescriptions filled there even if you're not a member. So if you have a Costco in your area, you certainly want to take advantage of that. One more thing that people need to check out. If you have health insurance through your company, um, a lot of companies pay for something called a pharmacy benefit manager. It's a PBM. With that that a lot of people can actually get prescription drugs through a mail order program and that can be a lot cheaper too. And one more thing, there's a few really, really good prescription apps. Um, GoodRx is very popular. Mm -hmm. Rx Saver is also a really big one. Those can actually help you save a lot of money on prescriptions regardless of the insurance that you use, but they can tell you the best pharmacy to get your um, prescriptions filled in your area. Girl, all right, I wrote all that down. I was at Costco yesterday. I'm sorry. I got a quick question, Rick. Uh, home repairs can kill people's budgets. What are some things that people can do to save money on home repairs? Uh, you know, what's funny about that, Brad, is I think a lot of us forget about how important our regular maintenance is because a lot of times things end up breaking or breaking down because we're not doing the normal home um, maintenance that we need to do. And that could be something as simple as knowing when you need to be changing your home, like your filters in your yeah. HVAC system. So maintenance is critical, and you got to put that stuff in your calendar. Now, if you're going to hire somebody to do it, 
um, to get the help that you need, remember the cheapest person isn't always the best person. Um, you want someone who's definitely recommended. You clearly do not want to pay them all that money up front. Deposit up front, a little bit in the middle, and when the job is complete. No one has any time for any mess. And please do not take on any projects that you know is beyond the scope of what you can handle because you don't want to be out there creating some more problems too. All right. You always not doing. Good morning. Well, my question is, what kinds of savings can we use instead of retirement? Like, we want to save for right now. What would be the best way to save your money and maximize your profits, I guess? Hey, good morning. And, and you know, I think about money in three different buckets. is money that we're going to use now, money that we're going to have for retirement, and then that bucket in the middle is just money that we're investing. So you can, you can invest in any type of an account. You know, think about it, whether it's a major company like a, like a, um, a Morgan Stanley or through your bank. You want to intentionally invest. And so whatever you like, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, that third bucket of money, that's your investment money that you can maximize now. All right, Joe, what you not doing? Good morning. Jess, I would like to know what are the pros and the cons of going to a debt consolidation company due to the pandemic I had a decrease in pay, so I'm finding it difficult to pay my debt. <sighs> Um, good morning, and thanks for calling. Now, there's one nonprofit organization that I like people to check out if they're having debt issues, and that's NF. CC.org, O-R-G. Um, any debt consolidation company, you want to know what this is going to cost you. How much is it going to cost you? Because you don't want to cost you more than what the debt's going to be. How long are you going to be in the program? Is the debt going to be forgiven? And what is your credit going to look like on the other side of this? Ask all the questions and definitely want to see how they're rated on social media and with the Better Business Bureau. You on with your not Thorne? Good morning. I was thinking about investing into maybe like some stocks or something, but I really wasn't sure what would be a good one. Like, cause I know I saw and heard a lot of stuff about different things on wall street that had went down when um, COVID-19 came and I don't want to invest my money in something hoping to get, you know, funds from it. And then it all just basically goes down the drain. Right. Good morning. You know, that's the thing about investing. What we know for sure, the market's going to go up. And what we know for sure is the market's going to go down, too. Investing is really about a long-range plan and commitment, not a short-range one. So what I suggest people do is called dollar cost averaging. That means every pay period or once a month, you're having a certain amount of money that you're putting into the market, and you're buying whether the market is high or low. And that's a great way to get your feet wet and begin investing, too. There it is. Zanai, let everybody. Uh, we got another call. Yeah, you always deny. Good morning. This your girl, C Kid. I got a question for Zanai. <laughs> I've been broke in all pandemic law, and um, my rent twelve dollars. I need help um with money. How to save? Like, what's some good saving money tips? Cause a chick need lashes. I need my nails done. I need my toes done. I need eyebrows, art shit, and whatnot. Like, how to save money? Well, I thought y'all were screening these calls. I thought y'all told me y'all were screening these calls. What happened? What happened? That's Kiki. Kiki got to help Kiki tonight. She need help. Kiki got the back line. Oh. She get a special line, honey. Oh my God! Wait a minute, Kiki done broke out the lashes and everything. She said she needs money for all of that. She buys her rent twelve dollars though. That's what I want to know. She's a big Tasha driver. <laughs> Do not let everybody. Well, if her rent is twelve dollars, she don't need my help. She good. <laughs> Do not let everybody know how you can be reached. <laughs> um, please follow me at Janai Thornton, J-I-N-I-T-H-O-R-N-T-O-N. Would love to hear from you. Hi, child. Janai Thornton, y'all. I got your front page covered up next. 14, 14 after the hour. We just the morning show. All right, Rick's the morning show. 27 minutes after the hour, y'all. The same is being bought by Toyota. That's right. When you get behind the wheel of a handsomely rugged Toyota truck, Mighty moments full of head turning half ton swagger are always right around the corner. Toyota, let's go places. I got your front page right here. Eva, good morning. 
Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everyone. I'm your girl, Eva Marcel, on this beautiful Monday morning with a quick look at your front page news. President Biden's chief medical advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci, said yesterday that officials are considering recommending that vaccinated people wear masks to help protect against the Delta variant of COVID-19. Meanwhile, a conservative radio host in Tennessee laughed at the idea of getting vaccinated. He then caught COVID and is hospitalized and is urging his listeners to get the shot. Now, in other news, Democrats are looking to Eric Adams, a former African-American police chief and the party's nominee for New York City mayor, as a model for how to discuss crime and police reform. Meanwhile, Speaker Nancy Pelosi appointed another Republican to the committee that will investigate the January 6th attack on the Capitol. And last but certainly not least, condolences go out to the family of civil rights activist Robert Paris Moses. As a young activist during 1964 Freedom Summer, Moses was beaten and arrested in Mississippi when he tried to register black people to vote. And in another incident, he had his car shot at when he was driving with two other activists. Moses died yesterday at the age of 86. All right, that was a quick look at your front page news. For more, log on to the rickysmilingmorningshow.com. Rock T, what's going on? Well, let's start off with the uh, Washington football team, formerly known as the Redskins, as they continue to decide on what na- new name they're going to give themselves. The Cleveland Indians revealed their new nickname, okay? They will no longer be called the Cleveland Indians after this year. The new nickname is the Cleveland Guardians. Yes, the Cleveland Guardians, man, Major League Baseball team. So get used to saying that name starting in 2022. On that note, it's time for a Tokyo Olympics update I got for you, man. Overall medal leaders right now. China's leading with 17. USA is in second place with 14 total medals. And, of course, Japan has 12. Shout out to Simone Biles, man. She locked up spots in the all-around and four events. The finals will be on Sunday. Uh, U.S. Women's Softball Squad. You got something to say about Simone Biles? Yes, sir, boy. She went and did a coin flip. <laughs> Come on, God, man. Damn, she, half time coin flip. She I competing said. against herself, dog. Boy, it I, is what it is, I man. I swear she killing it. Let's shout now out they to trying the, to change the rules, but go ahead. Exactly, exactly. Come on, man. U.S. women's softball team, they advanced to the gold medal game. The U.S. men's swim team wins the 4 by 100 meter freestyle. But let's talk about the U.S. men's basketball squad. They lose the opening game to France. Now, we was already kind of concerned because they lost two exhibition games, but then they lose the opening game to France. This is the USA basketball. We're supposed to be the baddest in the world when it comes to basketball, and they lose the first game. Well, why, why LeBron and KD and, and James Harden, why why they not playing? KD is playing. LeBron just kind of rested his body. You know, LeBron, I mean, uh, James Harden, you know, he was hurt. He was injured, so he's, he's, he's recovering from injury as well. So, you know, Steph Curry resting his body, you know, so, but still. Well, what's the name for, play for uh, New Orleans? Uh, uh, his knee's bad, huh? You talking about so he uh, looked like his knees be hurting all the time. talking about Zion Williamson? Yeah. Yeah, he got to rest his body. He rest his knees. He going to have his them patchy knees. Ewing knees. Hurting. <laughs> we went to the game, right? We were sitting right down the front. We were talking about it. We went to the Mavericks game when they came to play the Mavs. Mm-hmm. And his knees looked like it was hurting the whole game. Absolutely, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he got to lose some weight. So, so shout out to Zion, man. He got to take them braces as uh, much, so much as he can. What Charles Barkley is going on here? <laughs> Shout out to Naomi Saka, even though she represents Japan, she advanced to the third round in tennis at the Olympics, man. That's what I got right now. Let's talk sports on my social media at Rock T Holla. There it is. The brat got the hot spot right now. The spot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot and hot. Woo! You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the B-R-A-T. All right, Rick's about the morning show, 29 before the top of the hour, y'all. Listen, man, the segment's being brought to you by the Tom Joyner Fantastic Voyage. Listen, uh, get your cabin today for the Tom Joyner Foundation Fantastic Voyage 20 in 2021 cruise. The ship sails November the 6th through the 14th, 2021 with Usher, Alicia Keys, and more. Go to blackamericaweb.com. What up, Brett? What up, Ricky? Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brad Tat Tat, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. 
So let's get off into it. It was two releases this weekend. Universal's Old, directed by M. Night Shyamalan, and Paramount Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins, starring Harry Golding, which opened with $16.5 million and $13.35 million. Now, at the top of a slow box office weekend compared to the past few weeks, Black Widow, starring Scarlett Johansson, closed out at top three, no, closed out the top three in the number one spot uh, with $11.6 million. So that is what is up with that. We, they trying to figure out if it's doing bad right now because of the Delta variant and the problem for the lackluster reviews. But we shall see. But I, I thought O oh, would be good because the, the previews are really, really good. You see them people on the island and they yeah. wake up and their kids is old. Like, I'm surprised that didn't do mm. better. Anyway, y'all, moving That's on, fans. That, uh, damn, uh, insurance jump rope commercial when they were jumping <laughs> rope. And then they... I love that commercial. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> in that damn uh, Lee Moo E Moo and Doug. When they was on that damn treadmill, uh -huh. he had them tight up there running uh, them tight pants on in them church shoes. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> he said, he say, You got bird legs. <laughs> <laughs> Love those TV commercials. Yes. Oh, Lord. Okay, y'all, let me get this Kanye West in. So the fans are disappointed when they learned that Kanye's West anticipated album Donda wasn't coming out after that listening party at the Mercedes-Benz Arena in Atlanta last week. Media personality Justin LeBoy re revealed that the album is due out in August, August 6th, but actually may come out sooner. Now, media personality and influence Dilla Farella said that the album could arrive sooner via Instagram. Uh, he said Donda has been put on in production all day. Finishing it up now, one tweet about Kanye, and I've got a couple dozen death threats in like 30 minutes. I'm waiting, oh my God, I'm waiting just as eagerly as everyone else, but sheesh, y'all are crazy. Meanwhile, Kanye skipped his Rolling Loud performance this weekend and is apparently still at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, according to TMZ, <laughs> he vowed to stay at the stadium until he finishes Donda. So he must have set up a studio there and is working in the stadium. That is okay, that's so Kanye. Uh, he was spotted in the bleachers at his listening party in an outfit uh, by the youth. Uh, well, well, a, youth. a stocking cap over his face. In the United oh, Soccer cap. outfit. <laughs> well, what? <laughs> what kind of outfit? The United, uh, Atlanta United, the soccer team. Right. Yeah. But it had so. a stocking cap over his whole face. <laughs> yep, that was cute. Whew. Boy, I was, boy. <laughs> I guess well, Atlanta, I uh, Atlanta honored Kanye, y'all, with his own day. Uh, the city of Atlanta presented him because uh, he was born in Atlanta, they gave him a plaque backstage, and the event proclaimed July 22nd, Kanye West Day. So, that is that. They didn't and make it public because I didn't hear nothing about it. I, 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 didn't, either. I didn't either. I didn't either. Well, y'all, congratulations to Kanye, y'all. Uh, <clears throat> last but not least, Diddy fans can expect some uh, some new work by him in just a couple of months. That's right, Sean Diddy Combs, who refers to himself as Love now, announced he is releasing his album in September, and he shared the news on Instagram, writing off the grid the album September 24th 2021 welcome to the love era so we can expect that from Diddy y'all so we're gonna wrap up the hot spot right there coming up next though we got Mark Moriel and we got the praise mix down I'm your girl Brad Tat Tat you can catch me on all my social media so so Brad the time now is 25 minutes before the top of the hour it's the Ricky Smiley morning show all right ladies and gentlemen y'all help me welcome the National Urban League president and CEO Mark Moriel with this morning's commentary on the state of black America Mr. Mark good morning Hey, good morning, Ricky, and good to be with you, and happy Monday to your listeners all across the nation. State of Black America today, we talk Texas and the filibuster. There's a protest, as you know, by Texas legislators against the anti-democratic voter restrictions that are being passed or that the Texas legislature is trying to pass. A few weeks ago, more than 50 Democratic state representatives in an act of courage, left the state of Texas, denying the Texas House a quorum and therefore enough members to pass such restrictive and anti-democratic voting laws. The bill that Texas wants to pass uh, would limit options on voting and add new steps and requirements to the voting process. So one of the things it does is it gives partisan poll watchers free reign to intimidate voters in polling places. Ricky, this is what they did in 1866, right. 1867, 1868, 1869. Allow people to stand at the polling places and intimidate black people who are trying to exercise their constitutional rights. We are not going to let them bring that back. And so some Texas state legislators 
and Texas is a low voter turnout state already, they think that the fewer Texans who vote, the better off Texas democracy is. And that's wrong. It's morally wrong. It's racially motivated. And voters of color, black and brown and others, will bear the brunt of these restrictions, as well as young voters, disabled voters, and all people that sometimes have difficulty getting to the polling place on Election Day. Now, these legislators who fled Texas are courageous, and they can only delay and not block this anti-democratic and anti-voter suppression measure. What do we need? Congress, the House and the Senate, have the power to pass federal legislation to protect the voting rights of all people and to protect the voting rights of those in Texas and Georgia and Florida, all these states where these anti-democratic voting laws are being introduced and in some cases passed. The For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, two separate bills, uh, if passed by the Senate, they passed the House, would immediately counteract these anti-democracy efforts by state, legisl- state lawmakers. Why is it so hard? Because you've got a brick wall of Republican opposition and not enough courageous Democrats who mm-hmm. want to create an exception to this archaic, archaic filibuster rule. The filibuster can be reformed. It's been reformed in the past to allow legislation to pass, notwithstanding the 60-vote requirement. The filibuster isn't in the Constitution. It wasn't mandated by the Founding Fathers. It's not even a federal law. It certainly, Ricky, isn't one of the Ten Commandments. It's Mm -hmm. a Senate rule. It's been used over the years primarily to block civil rights legislation as it is being used, as it is being used now. So we want to bring the pressure, bring the heat to pass these bills by whatever peaceful means are necessary, Ricky. This is important democracies at stake. For those listening, call your U.S. Senator, 202-224-3121. We have to be in the game. We have to be counted. You can also uh, go to Senate.gov and find your member of the Senate. Send them a message. Say, pass voting rights legislation for the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act and do it now. The state of black America 2021 voting rights is our biggest and most paramount issue. We have to protect it for ourselves and for our children. It is being challenged in a way we haven't seen in perhaps more than 50, maybe even 100 years. And Ricky, I'm Mark Morial, and that's the state of black America for today. Man, thank you so much, man. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all please help me give it up for the former New Orleans mayor and Louisiana state senator who is currently president of the National Urban League, Mark Morial. Thank you so much, Mr. Mark. We always appreciate you for keeping us up to date on the state of black America. More Rick's Mountain Morning Show coming up.